Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to the show on today. Today is a very, very special episode because this is going along with our Message of Hope series, and we are going to be touching on business, wellness, life, and also hard topics that are usually not easy to discuss. And today we're going to talk about that topic, those hush topics, the things that we usually sweep up on the rug with our special guests on today. So I just want to put out this disclaimer for our audience on today. We realize that the Tina Ramsey Show and podcast is a place in which our it's family friendly. However, some topics that we may touch may not be suitable for our younger viewers. So parents, please be advised that we're gonna be touching on topics that you may not want your child to hear right now and you may want to speak with them privately about this. But without further ado, we know, you know what time it is. It is not time for Netflix and chill. It's time for the Tina Ramsey Show and Podcast. So go grab a seat, get a snack, and we'll be back in a moment. Welcome to the Tina Ramsey Show and Podcast. A show to motivate you and introduce you to celebrities, authors, singers, coaches, and standout entrepreneurs that are making a positive impact in the world. Men and women women coming coming together to share knowledge, knowledge, having up-building conversations conversations centered around around business, wellness, and life. life. We connect you with some amazing people and opportunities. It's your time to shine and help you do that. We love sharing your stories of success and spotlighting you, the entrepreneur. We love to laugh. We love to smile. We love to celebrate you and we love having fun. So go grab a seat, get a snack, and don't forget your beverage. It's time for you to come share, shine, and grow. Yes, this time for the Tina Ramsey Show. Let's get started with your host, Coach Tina Ramsey. And just like that, we are back. And I hope that you was able to hear me before because we were having some slight technical difficulties with the audio. So if you are just tuning in today, we're going to be having a a touchy topic that needs to be talked about, needs to be addressed. So we know that the Tina Ramsey Show and Podcast is a family-friendly television and podcast show. However, during this time, we will dive into conversations that need to be discussed in order for us to get hope, in order for us to heal, in order for us to walk into our purpose. So today's guest is one of those individuals that is a triumphant woman who have been able to overcome a lot in her life. And now she's using her story as a way to help you see that you can overcome. Her name is Tanisha Jordan, and she was born in Ohio, but she now resides in North Carolina. She is an author, she is an entrepreneur, and she is a overcomer. So let's bring Tanisha Jordan on. Welcome to the show. Hello, how are you? I am doing amazingly awesome. I'm Good. just so happy that you're here because we was having some tech issues in the back, <laughs> but I'm glad that everything is gone running smoothly right now. And so Tanisha, you, we're going to jump right in to the topic at hand, because first of all, I want to applaud you for talking about a topic that is not easily discussed. And when I read your story, honey, it brought me to tears and not just tears of sadness because it was more so tears of, wow, look what she's been through and look what she's doing with it. How you was able to take some negative, not so great situations and use it as a way to not only heal yourself, but also heal others in the process. And so when I looked at your 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 story. You was a woman or young girl that suffered from sexual abuse from multiple family members. You also dealt with physical abuse and from your ex spouse. So it was a repeated a, a repeated line of uh, decades of abuse that you had to endure. And then one day you got this moment where you decided, my voice matter. I'm I'm not gonna be a victim. I'm gonna be an overcomer. So what was it? What was that moment where you where you decided to just take control and just move forward? 
Well, first of all, thank you for having me to share my story with everyone who was listening. Um, so that moment was, like you said, I, I had enough. And there was a moment where something just came over me. It was like, you know, you're better than this. Mm -hmm. um, and for me to be so shelled and, and cut off from everyone because of what I was going through, I got tired of that. I got tired of, you know, um, not being able to do the things that everyone else was doing, whether it be hanging out with friends or whatever, because I was miserable um, and I just wasn't happy. Um, so it was, it came a point in time where I finally said, you know what, I had enough and I, I just had enough. <laughs> and that's where I had to start to speak, talk about what was going on. And that's where I opened up to my, my father after whew, years, years of being quiet. I mean, like 22 years. Um, so it was, it was time. It was time because I was, I was destructive. I was, I was just not a happy person. So I wanted to be happy. It was time for me to be happy. Just bottom line. Well, first of all, I am so moved with your honesty and transparency because many times um, individuals who are victims or, or have dealt with something, they remain silent because, you know, you never know how other people is going to react and you worry about that. Then what's going to happen once you reveal who did what? Um, and let's face it, the inner demons that's inside of you that you have to face with all of this going on. And something that was really profound when I read your uh, int your first introduction to your book, the first pages on Amazon, it, girl, that thing hit me, hit me right here. I'm trying to tell you, when you start going through the dynamics of how we was raised, and we was raised to do to do things the right way, but we were also not to say this, but to do that. And you was going through the dynamics. Mm -hmm. That is something that's universal that we all pretty much experience. And then right. you going through making the decision to turn those negative energies, those negative emotions into something positive. Um, because you noticed that your behavior was becoming destructive. So let's talk about that. With everything that you was dealing with over that long period of time, you experienced, you said to yourself, uh, negative behaviors. Let's talk about that for a little while. So the negativity that I, you know, I was speaking of, you know, again, it was just the, first of all, the abuse from my grandfather and my uncle. That right there, of course, when I was younger, you know, I'm, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not knowing that what I'm going through is a negative situation. I just know that these two people that are supposed to love me and care for me, you know, are there doing things that they shouldn't be doing. And of course I didn't figure that out until I got a little older. Mm -hmm. um, and then just going through that and then being destructive because of, it was a trust issue for me. Mm -hmm. So me not being able to trust them, I couldn't trust anybody as I got older. And so I became destructive. I become, I was, I was a fighter. I mean, literally fighting, you know, um, I, I stayed in trouble in school. Um, granted I graduated and I got through, I got through everything. However, um, it didn't keep me from being, you know, a mean person. I'm not, I, I, then I was, I was a mean person. Um, I, I just, I was not friendly. I was um, hurting inside. I was trying to find a way to release how I was feeling. Just didn't know how to do it properly at the time. Mm -hmm. So my way of doing that was just by fighting and arguing and just being, just being mean and taking out my frustrations on everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, after a while you get tired of that, <laughs> you know, you get tired of being mean you get tired of you know just having that negative energy around you and mm -hmm. i had to realize that negative energy was coming from me but i had to figure out why it was coming from me mm -hmm. and you know as i got older and i started putting things together knowing what happened to me and what was going on with me even in my marriage um you know it was like okay when is enough enough 
when do you want to be happy? When do you want to get away from all of this negativity? And how do you do it? That was the question. How do you do this? Mm. Uh, That's a good, I want you to hold that mm -hmm. point right there. Because how do you do it? And you actually, my dear, figured out a solution on how to do it and how you can let go of that anger in a productive, positive way. So right now we're going to take a commercial break from our sponsors and we'll be right back with the amazing Tanisha Jordan, which is sharing with her, sharing with us her story of overcoming and how you can do the same. We'll be back in a moment. Um, little did I know that this was slowly bringing me to a point that would ultimately cost me my life. Hush topics are those topics that people do not want to talk about, that we keep secrets in our family, we keep secrets at work, and things that happen to us like sexual harassment, sexual assault, domestic violence, if you were part of sex trafficking, if you were molested as a child. Those are hush topics that rarely are talked about, but are really affecting our communities, our families, our churches. And so that's what hush talks. I am a victim of domestic violence. Sexual assault and sexual harassment. Sex trafficking and crimes against women, children, and the elderly. Sexual assault for child sex abuse. Sexual harassment. Every single person on this earth has a story, but not everybody has the courage to speak it. My name is Alicia Harris. Sheila Renee Bailey. Brandy Richard. Joyce Reed. Devon Pierre. Keith Phillips. Ursula Kelly. Linda Skolnitsky. Chandra Cleveland. I am Kathy Butler. My name is Richard Butler. So you can go to hushnomore.org and request to watch the entire documentary. This is some topics that we really need to talk about because it's happening right within the home, not outside the home so much so now. And so we need to have these conversations. We know it's not easy. However, at the Tina Ramsey Show, we like to bring you individuals who have been through what you're going through and they see the light at the end of the tunnel and they have provided their beneficial solution. So before the break, we had Tanisha Jordan, and she was telling us her why. And then also she said she just got sick and tired. Sick and tired of what? Being angry. And then she decided that she was going to do something about it. So tell us about what you decided to do, because you actually decided to do something even more powerful, I feel, than just speaking what happened to you. You decided to take that information and you did what with it. So first things first, <laughs> I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God had been testing me. I know for a fact that I was being tested. Um, and I don't, I can't speak for everyone who, you know, who they believe in, but I know for me, um, I always believed in God. My mom and my mom and dad always instilled that in us. We stayed in church. Um, but in my book, I also say that things happen for a reason. Um, though those things, you know, some people are like, but why that? I, I don't know why, but I know that, um, God was testing my faith and, you know, prior to, me speaking up about everything. Um, you know, I, I was allowing the devil to just take control of a situation. And so it was time for me to, you know, like I said, open up, start talking, getting it off, releasing those demons. And so finally, um, there was an incident where I believe if I, if I can remember correctly, I was going through, you know, the, vi the domestic violence with my second spouse and that day, or it might've even been just an argument. And at that point, something clicked and was like, this is it. It's enough. Enough is enough from that all the way going back to me being molested. Um, somebody has to know something because I was holding all of this, not being able to talk about it because I didn't want to hurt anyone. And so um, I didn't realize I was hurting myself. Mm. And, 
you know, I had to stop and think, you know, you can't keep protecting those who hurt you, you know, and sacrificing your happiness. And so I, I went to my parents after 22 years of holding in information that they should have known back when I was seven. And, you know, finally released to them and let them know, hey, this is what's going on. They knew and they had an idea, but not 100 percent sure about the domestic violence, um, of course, because I was grown and parents aren't stupid <laughs> by far. They're not stupid. But, you know, to tell them about the molestation, um, the adversity I was going through when I was younger, that right there was the toughest because that was my father's father and brother. Yeah. And so to tell them, hey, this is what they did to me. That was the toughest thing that I ever had to do. Mm -hmm. um, and knowing that my father was sick with cancer and bringing that stress upon him was tough. But again, I can't, I could not afford to keep myself bottled in because of someone else. I had to let it be known. And so I did. And at that very moment when I did, I felt free about this much. I felt a little free, but I knew there was more work I had to do. Mm. Um, but just knowing that my father knew what I told him, <clears throat> it was hurtful. And just to know he was on his way to visit my uncle in oh. prison. He was on his way out the door Wow! for raping a 10 year old. And when he raped her, he did 15 years. And my dad was on his way out of the door when I rushed in to tell him what happened. He went to still visit him. And I'm sure he had his conversation and words with him. Mm -hmm. What was said, I don't know. I never revisited it because I didn't want to, I didn't want to know anything else. I just knew that it was time for me to start opening up. Mm -hmm. It was, it was time for me to release those demons. Mm, that's powerful. And um, what resonated to me, just listening to what you said, was that you realized that you was important because all your life you have been protecting the ones who hurt you. And then you realize, wait, I, it's time for me to protect me and right. my happiness. And then although you had in order to do that, you had to say or tell your dad some things that you really didn't want to tell him about his brother. However, you did that and you said you felt a little bit free. And that was the beginning of your overcoming because it's a process. It's a process. So what I love what you took and what you did, you actually wrote a book. So tell us about your book and what all came around inspiring you to put this in writing. And number two, you did something unique. You just didn't write a book, but you had a compliment of a journal to go through to help people heal. So what made you come up with all of that? Well, um, you know, as women, mm -hmm. as you know, we, we get a lot of our frustrations out on paper. Yes, we do. You know, we like to write. <laughs> and so when I started thinking about everything that had happened, it was like, you know, how do I get everything out? How do I, you know, let, you know, my parents or my mother or whoever know, including others know what has gone on and how do I teach others how to, you know, get through an adversity like that. And so I, I just sat down and just started writing. Everything was, you know, coming back to me about, you know, what I've done, you know, what I went through. And so I just started writing it all down. And my husband said to me, well, you know what, maybe you should put it in a book, you know, make a book out of it. And I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, no, I'm not that person. Okay. But <laughs> it ended up, be, I ended up being that person. Mm -hmm. And so um, just knowing that all of those things were embedded in me. And starting to write was making me feel better. Um, it just led me to do also that journal. 
Mm -hmm. um, because of the fact that just like me and other women, we like to write. So I said, well, you know, if I do this journal for others that want to write because they can't talk about what they're going through, this would be a good idea. Um, and the, and the journal is not by any means, a ordinary journal. You know, some people might think, oh, what's the difference between her journal and a Walmart journal or a Dollar Tree journal? You know, it's not just a book of lines. It's a book of encouragement. Mm. Um, it does have those lines where, you know, yeah, you're going to write down everything that you're feeling. But there's also a page in that journal that allows you to promise yourself. No one else. It promises yourself to do this 31 day journey of writing mm -hmm. of all of, you know, those pains and hurts that you're going through put it on paper and promise yourself that once you're done writing, that you are going to give it to someone that you trust. And that's our problem. You know, when we go through stuff like that, we tend not to trust people, Yeah. you know, but we can't always think that everybody's out to get us. Um, there's somebody that actually, you know, cares and really want to be there. And so you have to sit back and think about that. Um, so in the journal, you'll write down the person's name that you fully trust. Um, once you're, once they, once you put all the content in and you give it to that person, of course, they're going to read it. And when they read it, they're going to come back to you and they're going to have this conversation with you. That's the beginning of your healing. That's the beginning of that process. So now you're going to talk about it. And then you're going to move forward from there. The, the There's scriptures in there that's very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, there's affirmations. There's a lot of positive things in that journal that will help. <clears throat> um, you know, we, we tend to think that, you know, <laughs> there's nothing that's going to help us. Mm -hmm. There is something that there is things to help you, you mm -hmm. know, through this process. Um, you just have to be willing to put in that work. Exactly. Well, first of all, again, thank you. Thank you so much that you not only wrote the book in order to unleash uh, the pain that you was, that you were going through, but you thought outside of yourself mm -hmm. on helping others. And then you took it a step further, making it therapeutic by creating a journal. For those of you who just are tuning in right now, this is the amazing uh, Tanisha Jordan. She is the author of the book Behind Closed Doors. She actually tells of her story of how she have experienced multiple um, sexual um, abuse from family members and also being married as well. She walked you through the pages of her life through this book. And she also provide a way to help you that you can unlock and help tap into what was going on with you possibly by writing in her journal so that you can heal and learn to trust again. Um, this is actually her website as well, where it is behind uh, closed doors and she welcomes you to come for the book and the journal. Right now she is actually running a combo sale where you can get the book and the journal. So this is something that if you're looking for something for you, we always talking about self-care. And even if you have not personally dealt with anything uh, dealing with sexual assault, maybe you dealt with verbal abuse, mental abuse, it's still abuse. So how can you overcome that? Get this journal behind closed doors, okay? The title in itself is, is perfect for so many things that we hide behind closed doors and you can order it straight from her website. Also get to know her a little bit better. Here's her contact information for you to contact her. And uh, because this information right now, we really, this is a topic that we really have to discuss because in order for us to heal and right now in this time with these last two years, a lot of people, a lot of women, men, and children, are stuck in the home of their abusers. We don't. We never think about that if you're not personally going through that. But so many people during this crisis have been stuck in the house with their abusers, and they're taking more abuse than they normally would because everyone is in the home. And so, if you know anyone or you yourself need help, 
We're going to talk about some different ways in which you can get help if you're experiencing domestic violence, if you have been abducted or someone uh, kidnapped you with uh, sex trafficking. And we're going to show you different things in which you can do in order to get help, along with checking out her book on her website as well to purchase that set. Do it for yourself. You're worth it, okay? You're worth it. If you're not bold enough or courageous enough right now to speak out loud like uh, Tanisha, that it's okay because it's because it's front runner. She's a front runner. That's okay. You can you can heal privately and be able to help some other people on a because it's going to take all of us in order to help with this particular thing that is going on right now. So uh, Tanisha, one thing that like I said. We talked about your book. I just mentioned it again. But what made you decide to title the book Behind Closed Doors? Well, I mean, as we know, a lot of things happen behind closed doors. And it's sad. It's sad. Um, not everything is good behind closed doors. A lot of the majority of the things that happen behind closed doors, we don't know about. Mm-hmm. And um, unfortunately, you know, for me, no one knew what was going on on behind those closed doors literally i was being put to sleep to take a nap behind closed doors just to have my grandfather come in and touch me so that was the main reason why i named it what i named it because i'm thinking back like you're putting me to sleep to take a nap you open the door to walk in to close it to do something behind those doors that you shouldn't even be doing. And it was so secretive, of course, you know, my grandmother, not knowing what's going on, my father, my mother, no one knows. So, you know, behind closed doors, that was an instant, instant title for me. Um, Even with the domestic violence, you know, that's going on behind closed doors. Though some people may have known, it was still, you know, it was happening. Mm -hmm. And it it, it was tough. It was, it was tough, you know, but I'm just glad that I'm kind of glad that it happened the way it happened. Yes. Um, Well, like I said before, the journey that you're taking us on through the lenses of your life is really, really a journey and the ups and the downs of individuals because you're helping us to see uh, the victim's perspective because many times we see it, we may watch it on a movie, but to hear it from someone that's like, you, 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 you're the girl next door. So to hear mm-hmm. it from your perspective and to the longevity of how long it lasts along with the period of when you said, no, my voice matters and I am, I'm stopping this. I'm stopping this right now. Then you took it upon yourself to not only heal yourself, but help others. And I really like how you actually was honest and transparent with saying that before you even came to this moment, you personally had to, uh, you you manifested destructive behavior because you you kept it hidden, right? And many times, when individuals just in general going through something, and we can't even imagine this, but going through something in general, you if you don't deal with it, you're gonna manifest it in a in a different way. Your normally it's destructive behavior, alcoholism, um, uncontrolled sexual behavior, um, combativeness, different things that's that you're screaming for help, but you're doing it in a different type of way. Um, Some people use drugs. So you had destructive behavior and you, you, I'm just so glad you had the forethought at one time to just say, wait a minute, this is not me. Mm -hmm. This is a manifestation of what I went through that I have been mute. That now if I release it, I can truly heal. Mm -hmm. So, wow. Powerful. I was, you know, and I meant to mention, because, you know, when, you, when you're growing up, you get a title. You know, some, mm-hmm. some, some children are so mean that they are, oh, she's a hoe, mm-hmm. or she's this, or she's that. But you don't know what that person is going through. Though I was not what they were calling me, 
I may have carried myself that way because I was being, I was taught something at an early age that was for grownups. Mm -hmm. So I'm now carrying myself like an adult, you know, maybe kissing on boys or I wasn't having sex. I didn't have sex until I was 15. Not that it makes it okay. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I had sex, it was like, okay, I'm having sex now. And, you know, I should be doing 15 year old things, not having sex. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even at the age of 11, I'm attempting to have sex. Age 12, I'm attempting to have sex. Mm -hmm. These are things that, you know, no child should be doing. But the the feeling that I was getting at that age was from when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, kids are cruel, you know, and, and they'll talk about you and say all of these. And that was another thing that was, that was another thing that I was thinking about. Like you went through a lot of stuff because of what your grandfather and your uncle put you through. And, you know, there was another gentleman who attempted some things. And because of that, it gave me a bad name, but no one took the time to find out what was really going on. My parents, of course, my parents have always been there, always been supportive, but they didn't know. No one watched us, but my grandparents and my uncle. So for them, they don't think they have to protect me. Mm -hmm. So for them, it's like, oh, she's just acting out because she's a teenager. That's it. But that was so far from the truth. One thing that I just heard you say, we as a society need to stop judging a man or a woman who have a uh, behavior that exemplify uh, what we call it. Older people call it fast, <laughs> you know? Right, right. You, right. You, you just don't know why they're exhibiting that behavior. It could be from something that they personally went through that they're not talking about that taught them this type of behavior at a way young age and they can't even wrap their mind around what is going on because at that point being so young you're not understanding right and wrong in this area because it's an adult situation mm -hmm. a child put in an adult situation so you just said something you just hit the nail on the head if we see a child or a teenager that's acting out being overly sexualized they they, they dating they're doing all this different stuff that are usually attached to being an adult, then we need to start having a little bit of conversations exactly. because that child could be going through some type of abuse or have went through it. And this is the only way they know how to express themselves. Exactly. That's exactly. We, we need to be careful with the words that we use because they attach negative words to you that could have disrupted your whole life forever had you not had God in your life and had you not had the forethought to say, hold up, I'm going to stop this. But everybody don't have that. That's so, right. oh my goodness, we need to be careful with what we call women, what we call men that's out there, what we call women that's out there, because you don't know their story. Okay. You don't know their story. Wow, Tanisha. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to take a small commercial break and we're going to come back and we're going to have a discussion about so talk more about this topic um, because we need to have this conversation on today. Um, we'll be back in a moment. On this journey, I found myself on the road through personal pain and discovery. I found out that there were so many women and young girls who suffered just like me due to having a lack of information about our bodies. I knew then that it was up to me to help and share what I know. So I traveled on the road that has many ups and downs in order to empower and inform young girls that there is a better way. And I'm yet on this road again, which is very uncertain, but there are many bright moments along the way with inspiring the next young generation of ladies to take control of their bodies, health, and minds on this road. I find myself moved with compassion and empathy for the moms who just don't know. That's why I go to many places near and far to inspire, to educate, to empower the next generation of women and young girls 
to take complete control of our minds, our bodies, and our health. And just like that, we are back. And let me bring back on our special featured guest, which is Tanisha Jordan. And we have been talking about those hush topics, also taking a journey back into when she was a child. And gradually, she's taken us on a journey from a young child to an adolescent to a teenager, all the way up into adulthood and how that looked for her in order to inspire you to have hope and know that even if you have ever dealt with this before or you're currently dealing with this, there is hope for you, okay? And you can overcome. And she is the author of Behind Closed Doors that you can go get from um, Amazon as well. And she also have a self-help therapeutic journal to go along with it. So as you read the pages and being able to see the windows of her life, she hopes that it helps you tap into yours so that you can start healing yourself from the inside out. Okay, Tanisha. So with everything that you have went through, do you wish that you would have um, spoken up sooner? How do you feel about that? Um, so as far as speaking up sooner, sometimes I do. Sometimes, sometimes I do. And some people might ask, you know, what do you mean sometimes? Well, you know, as I was writing the book, you know, um, I realized that God was using me and he used me in a way that <laughs> I would have never imagined because as I tell everybody, I hate to write, I hate to read, <laughs> I hate it. And so, um, he put me in a place where I was going to be uncomfortable, but it was needed. And so had I said something um, at the time, this journey would be totally different. It'd be totally different. And so I feel like, you know, telling yes would have been helpful for my parents. But for me, thinking back now, it's like, you know, you had to do this for a reason and it was to help others as well, you know? So mm, I, I want to say yes. And I want to say no, it, it's 50, 50. I wish I would have for the, you know, for mm -hmm. the, from the information for my parents to have, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm where I'm at. Let's just put it that way. I'm glad I'm where I'm at. I'm glad it happened the way that it did um, because we tend to choose our own paths and make our own decision on what we want to do. And sometimes we mess things up doing that. Mm -hmm. And so after a while, I had to learn how to be obedient and just stop and listen and let God guide me and to what he wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. And so um, this is where we are. Well, first of all, you showing us through your life, through your story, that you have a voice, that we all have a vo voice. And you're also showing us how it looks to break the silence. Because the hardest part is just to open your mouth to say it because you're holding it in. So you're letting people see how it is to break the silence and letting them know that, hey, She's no different than me. I can do it too. And you and so, and I also hear you in your story, the power of no. Mm -hmm. The power of no. And how you use your voice and the power of no saying, no, I am not having this anymore. And you decide to be resilient and you decide to reset your mind and you decide to do things that you didn't necessarily want to do. Like you said, you said, I don't like to read and I don't like to write. <laughs> <laughs> but you decided to, to do that in order not only to help yourself, but again, I keep going back to the same point uh, that resonates with me. Your why. You did it to help yourself, but most importantly, you did it as a gateway 
or pathway to help so many others that may not have the courage that you have at this time, but you can help them in a discreet way, in a mm-hmm. discreet way. And so um, if you could change, because I know that you sometimes you say, you just said that you, um, sometimes you wish you did, told a little earlier and sometimes you don't, but had you told earlier, your story wouldn't be what it is today. Right. So if you could change any of what happened to you, what would it be and why? Um, because I really personally, I really don't feel that you wouldn't be the person that you are today had not the experience that you have. Exactly. So, exactly. So explain it. So um, what would I change? Um, that was the question, right? Yeah. <laughs> what would yeah. I change? Yeah, I... If that, if you if, if you had anything to change, what would it be? So I, I probably would change the fact that I had a better grandfather. Don't don't get me wrong. I don't want to put mud on his name or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. Um, he is deceased, but you know he did something because, from my understanding, it happened to him. So it oh, is God. a pattern, and okay. so I had to stop and think about that. You know, mm-hmm. because someone does something to you doesn't mean they're doing it because they want to do it. They're doing it because there's it's probably been done to them before, you know. Um, but if I had to change anything, it would be to, you know, <laughs> probably not, you know, it, it's so tough to even say. It's just... I probably would just change the fact that, you know, I would have spoke a lot sooner. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe not wait so far into my adult life. But as I said, everything is in timing. Everything Mm -hmm. is in God's timing. So, um, you know, again, me speaking too soon, I wouldn't be on this journey. Mm -hmm. Um, But I just wish, honestly... If I could have changed anything, it would have been telling my father before he passed away everything. I had made a promise to myself um, that had my father had gotten through um, hospice, which we was really hoping that he would have made it home. Um, he only knew what my uncle did. I never got to tell him what my grandfather did. Mm. And that was something that I was promising myself to tell him if he made it through. Um, so if I could change anything, it would be going back, telling him what had happened. Um, but again, only God knows what, you know, what our story is. And so, um, we just have to do things the way we are supposed to do it. And that's, first of all, we have to obey what God is telling us. And so I, I had to learn to sit still. Mm Mm-hmm. And I had to learn not to move so fast because we tend to do things too quickly. And, you know, when we do things too quickly, we destroy whatever it is our purpose is. Exactly. And so me just being still and enduring what I endured, even though it wasn't something good. Yeah. Um, one thing I always say, God will make you uncomfortable to get comfortable. And I was very uncomfortable throughout those years. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm comfortable. I'm in a place now where I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable to share the story. I'm comfortable to talk to others who have gone through the same thing. I'm comfortable with now smiling. You know what I mean? I'm I'm, I'm comfortable. And so, um, yeah, that's probably the only thing that I would change is just telling my father, you know, what his father done. Well, Tanisha... <clears throat> I'm going to tell you like this. You told your father what I, my personal opinion, you told your father what he was able to handle. That was all you need to let that go. Yeah. You told your father what he was able to handle. God know what he can bear. You remember in the Bible, it says that God will not allow beyond what you can bear. Right. So in this case, he didn't allow beyond what your father can bear because after you told him about uncle, that on his way, getting ready to go visit your uncle. Could you imagine? Right. And then you told him the other part 
that may have been beyond what he can bear. And that's probably why you wasn't allowed to tell him because right. it was a protection for him. Right. So the fact that you was able to tell your story, maybe not in entirety to your father, but you was able to tell it in entirety to certain people so that you can still heal. Right. Because exactly. you never know what could have happened if you would have disclosed all of that at that time, because right. I'm pretty sure that was a lot for him to hold at that moment during the time when he was going through cancer anyway. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you was able to share some and get some peace and he was able to get some peace, just hold on to that. Um, because like you said, many times we go through life and we feel regret on something that we wish we would have did differently. Maybe we should have did this or maybe we should have did that. But let me tell you something, what, however you're doing it and however it played out, that's the way it was supposed to be. Exactly. Yeah, that was the way it was supposed to be. So yep. you can rest into that. Um, she said, yes. And if you had told him, he would not be resting in peace. That's that's what a viewer just said. So yep. so know that you did all you can do. And then you're taking a step further again, like I said, and you're helping so many others. So what I would like to do right now, this is an episode in which we're not just going to... Um, tell you tell you various different things and the one from Tanisha is actually sharing her story and she's sharing it in hopes of inspiring you to start uh taking control of your life in a positive way so if you're going through domestic violence or as a child you was molested or raped um whatever the case may be by a family friend a family member and you having destructive behavior that's you're acting out because of what happened to you and you're not speaking up. And, but what I do want to say is that everybody have to release this type of information in their own time. Okay. Just because I say it's time that don't mean it's your time. So you have to be <clears throat> at a place where you feel comfortable to share. So this episode, we're going to be sharing. Um, Rosalyn said, this is a powerful testimony and Rosa said, so true. She said, amen. So true. Yes. And so this episode of the Tina Ramsey Show um, with our Message of Hope series for this uh, whole year of 2022. And uh, Tanisha, you said, so I'm a numbers person. <laughs> so you said it took you 22 years mm -hmm. to share to your father. We are yeah. in year 2022. Yeah. Two, two. two. That's okay. right. <laughs> so this is your time to share it to millions Right. So that you can help others um, through our show that is now reaching 300 million, 300 million homes worldwide. We're now on internet radio, on TuneIn. We're also on web TV and we're also on streaming TV. And so now your story, my dear, is going to help so many people. And I thank you for being, um, she said, two, two establishment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I thank you so much for sharing on that. And so what Tanisha and I want to do is actually provide for the viewers that are totally, that's listening in today, you can go and watch this episode in the next couple of weeks on television on uh, ExosDnetwork.com up under the BHC banner, which is Black House Media. You can watch it on streaming or on your device by downloading the ExosD uh, Network app or you can go to coachtinaramsay.com and watch it there or you can simply go to ctrmedianetwork.com yes we are everywhere baby because we got to help everybody we got to help you <laughs> so we got to make sure that you can get it however you can get it because we're global and we're making sure that our international people can actually see it through our website because some in india and various places like that they don't always have Roku and amazon but you can watch it on google and netflix um not netflix Oh, is that is the guy trying to tempt up? Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Am I going to Netflix? Hey, you gotta start the band. Okay. You gotta listen. Hold up. <laughs> so she said impact the world. Yes, and it is awesome. So make sure that you follow us. So I'm gonna um also what we're actually gonna do right now. Uh, she said, speak it, sis. <laughs> <laughs> so right now what we're going to do, um, I'm going to play uh, two videos for you. I'm going to play them one at a time. And this is also as a resource for those of you who may be battling with domestic violence or you may be uh, 
maybe you may have been abducted and you don't have any, you know, sexual assault, whatever the case may be. We are not only um, allowing her to tell her story of hope, but we're also providing you with resources. And maybe <clears throat> due to the situation that you're going through, you feel like you don't have any hope anymore. And we also providing you with the suicide hotline so that if you need help, all of these places will help you anonymously so you don't have to worry about it. And we will be sharing these videos up under the Fair Use Common <clears throat> Copyright Act, which is for educational purpose only. We're sharing videos that are from someone else in order to educate you on resources that are available for you. We do not claim the rights on these upcoming videos, but we do. And we are sharing it up under the Fair Use Copyright Act in order to educate you on resources to truly help you. So, <clears throat> um, Rosalind, not Rosalind, I'm thinking about Rosalind, one of our, uh, our comments. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ter um, Tanisha, tell us um, where we can get your book. I already said Amazon, but do you want people to go to your website and purchase your book and journal? Yes. Um, if you want an autographed copy, you can go to my website. It's IamNiciJ.com. That's I-A-M-N-E-I-C-E-E-J.com. Um, again, that's where you can get an autographed copy. Um, you would be able to get the two for 30 um, and on Amazon, of course, um, they're $20 for the book, 15 for the journal, but they won't be autographed. You'll just get them faster. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to reiterate that later on before we actually go out, before we go off the air. But right now, what I want to show you. So what do you do if you are abducted or you're going through abuse in your home or you're being sexually assaulted? What can you do? Or you have been pulled in a vehicle, but yet people can see you, but you're trying to alert them to what you, that you need help without alerting your abductor that you're actually getting help. You're putting a signal out for help. But right now I'm going to show you a signal that is universal that was actually developed by the Canadian Women Foundation that is the universe signal for help for you if you need help. It was nice to see you again. Yeah, great to catch up. Yeah. Oh, uh, can you share that banana bread recipe? Oh, sure. It's, it's actually my mom's banana bread recipe, but it's pretty foolproof and it's super easy. Oh, well, I appreciate it. I know your mom is a great baker, so I should be good. Um, the trick is to grease the pan really well. And use overripe bananas. That's my mom's tip. Okay. Good to know. I can't wait to try it. So so thanks again for the recipe. So if you are experiencing abuse and you don't know how to verbalize to get help because it will be very difficult for you to do so, this is the universal sign of help. It's your palm open, put your thumb in, and then you grab your thumb. That is telling people that I need help. Let's do it again. I need help. So if you ever see a child, a woman, or even a man, because men get abused as well, and they do that universal sign, you know right then that they are a victim and you need to get them help as soon as possible. That is the universal sign. Also, for those of you who may not know, there is a website that you can actually go on, which is the Canadian Women's Foundation. And it actually shows you these signals. And also you can reach out to get help as well. This is universal all the way around. So say, for example, you're not able to, say, for example, you're not able to do that, right? And you're in a situation where you can't do that. What do you do 
if you need to call 911, but you can't say what's actually going on. So this is a video from the 2015 uh, Super Bowl, which they did a PSA on domestic violence. And this is what you do when you call 911 and you do not want your abuser to know what you are doing. 911, operator 901, where's the emergency? 127, been there. Okay, what's going on there? I'd like to order a pizza for delivery. Ma'am, you've reached 911. This is an emergency yeah, line. Uh, large with half pepperoni, half mushroom. Um, you know you've called 911. This is an emergency line. Do you know how long it'll be? Okay, ma'am, is everything okay over there? Do you have an emergency or not? Yes. And you're unable to talk because... Right, right. Okay, is there someone in the room with you? Just say yes or no. Yes. Okay, um... It looks like I have an officer about a mile from your location. Are there any weapons in your house? No. Can you stay on the phone with me? No. Uh, see you soon. Thank you. All right, and we're back. So if you're ever in a situation and you're with your abuser and you cannot come out and say that you need help, it's universal where if you dial 911 and you say that you need to order pizza, they know that you need help. And so they will find the nearest law enforcement and send them to help you in your time of need. Now, of course, there are many other ways in which you can actually get help. However, these are the universal um, help for domestic violence and also for those who are being sex trafficked or adopted that you can get help. This is universal for children, women, and men. We want to not only for the beautiful Tanisha to tell her story, but we also want to provide resources for you so that you can know what you can do or just be aware, be aware of what's going on. If someone ever do this, do this to you, you will know what it means. If they ever do this, I need help. Or maybe someone may miss and call your house by accident and say they're ordering a pizza because they couldn't dial 911. Now you know that maybe you need to check into what's going on so that you can divert that person to 911 and make sure that you get the help that they need. And so, Tanisha, I want to just thank you so much for being on the show today and also just sharing with us your amazing journey in regards to overcoming, because of course it wasn't amazing what you went through, but the way that you are using your life as a testimony, as an encouragement, um, as resilience to let us see through the lenses of your life, how you was able to overcome. And we thank you so, so, so much for coming on sharing today. Someone just said good information. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it without Tanisha. <laughs> All right. For those of you who are, I forgot to show you the phone number. So for those of you who may be going through domestic violence, this is the National Domestic Violence Hotline. It is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can hear it in language of English, Spanish, and over 200 plus languages because they have interpretations of the very variations that you can be able to hear it in your own native tongue. And you can call 800-799-7233. And if you um, need help with, you know, the universal sign for I need help. This is also started um, with the Canadian Women's Foundation. However, if you are in Toronto, Canada, it don't matter what part of Canada you're in, you can call for help at 1-866-293-4483. Okay, that is 1-866-293-4483. And if you are local to the Midlands, North Carolina, like my girl, South Carolina, like me, and you need help. We also have an organization here, which is called Hush No More. It's located in Columbia, South Carolina. You can actually call them for help at 1-888-285-2161. Again, that number is 
888-285-2161. You can actually call and get help. And if you or someone that you know feels as if you cannot go on because the abuse has been taken over for so, so long and you have lost your hope, I want you to know that, that you still have hope. And if you're feeling suicidal, there's help for you. You can call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, and it's open 24 hours a day in multiple languages. And you just simply call 800-273-8255. Again, that is 800-273-8255. Your call can be anonymous, so you don't have to worry about anyone sharing your information. They are solely there to help you help you. Okay. And they're trained professionals. Uh, let's see. We have some comments coming in. We said, uh, good information, somebody else. And then someone said, hello, I'm new. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> All right. So in closing, uh, Tanisha, let's talk about your message of hope because this year on the Tina Ramsey Show and Podcast, we have our message of hope. So every guest that comes on our show, they're going to actually share whatever it is, was their aha moment, whatever motivated them. And you can just share it. Um, I'm going to give you the screen by yourself and you can share that message of hope. But before I actually do that, I want you to share with our audience that's viewing us that's going to be viewing us on TV later on, that's viewing us streaming all over media, and that's going to be listening to us all over, all right, from radio to podcasting networks all over. I want you to tell them clearly where they can go to get your book, number one, the title of your book, number two, and um, where they can follow you and connect with you on social media. Absolutely. So you can get my book at on Amazon, one. Um, that will not be a signed copy, of course. Or you can go to my website, which is imnecj.com, where you can purchase my book and my journal. Um, that is I-M-N-E-I-C-E-E-J.com. There you can get an autographed copy, and you can also get two for 30. Um you can follow me on all social media pa- platforms, Facebook, um, under Nisi Jordan, TikTok, um, Twitter, uh, Instagram, under I am Nisi J. Um, also, just to mention, I also have a GoFundMe page that I have set up um, for, I have an event set up for April 23rd for teenagers from my hometown um, that are going through the same thing that I've gone through. And so um, I am throwing an event. Um, I am looking to raise money to have the event as well as purchase numbers of books and journals to give to these teenagers. I have the school board along with me, some teachers, therapists along with me um, to, to have this event because there were some situations that happened in my city where I'm from, where these kids were trying to speak out and weren't being heard. I don't want that. And so I am doing this event for them. I also have a children's book that is coming out called Behind Closed Doors, um, The Good Touch and The Bad Touch. And this is for ages four to eight. So that will be out soon. So you can be looking for that probably this month on my website. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you for going back and doing the good touch, the bad touch for the young children. Yes. That, I mean, wow. That's a- I have grandkids, so I had to think about them. <laughs> yeah. What? You don't let have no grandkids? Wait a minute. You oh, throw yeah. me off. <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay. Hey, my kids oh. are super grown. <laughs> oh, well, honey, yeah. you look good. All right. Oh, you threw me off. Yeah, like, what? <laughs> Okay. All right, you guys. So also, you remember when I said CTR Media Network, you can actually be able to see and also hear this episode as well. I want you to also see some other amazing podcasters that we have here on our network that are everyday people doing extraordinary things. We also have Hush No More, which is that nonprofit organization that helped with Hush Topics where you can watch their interviews and their um, listen to their podcast. Of course, you'll be able to watch the replay of this amazing interview of resilience and overcoming um, by just simply clicking the Tina Ram to show podcast, but not only listen to us, make sure you show some love and listen to all these amazing podcasters that are here because we pulled this together on CTR media network in order to give you quality information in order to inspire you 
to walk in purpose and to never give up. So everybody gives us something a little bit different. However, it's all centered around business, wellness, life. And we talk about these hush topics, what we're talking about on today, because we want to make sure that you have the resources that you need to live your best life. And we are serious about that, making a positive impact in the world. So <clears throat> right now, what we're going to do, I would like for you, my dear, as cl in closing, to share your message of hope with our viewers. So I am going to remove myself from the video and you share with us whatever it is that you would like to share uh, to our viewers and listeners in regards to something that motivated you to give them hope in 2022. So my hope for everyone, um, especially those who have gone through or may be going through what I've gone through, um, my message is use your voice. Your voice is your weapon. I didn't know that then, but I know that now. And in order to kill that negativity, we have to use our voice. It's very important. It's very important to trust. It's very important to talk to those that we love and let them know, let them, let them in, let them in and let them know what's going on. Because if you don't let them in, how will they know? So if you want that help, start using your voice behind closed doors, if you're not behind closed doors, use your voice. That is our weapon. Um, 2022 is going to be a better year for everyone, but we have to put in the work. And I thank you guys for listening to my story. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, and you're right. Our voice does have power, but many times we don't realize how much power exists in each one of us because at some point we we just don't think we matter in some cases. And so thank you for helping us reaffirm our strength and our voice that all of us have within us. We just need to amplify it. <laughs> we just right. need to amplify it. <laughs> all right. So thank you so much um, for, they said, thank you so much for sharing. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing. And I know that um, our audience, they're going to be watching the replay. They're going to be listening in. Uh, that's just how the Tina Ramshorn podcast uh, supporters get down. They're going to watch it now. They're going to redo it. Um, and so we even have a, have a guy in. Hey, Thomas. He <laughs> the community said powerful. So true. So thank you so, so much for being our featured guest on today, sharing your book, sharing your journey behind closed doors and also your journal. And in the future, you're actually going to be coming out with a children's book that's going to be helping them with the right touch and no touch. Because at the end of the day, that's the reason why a lot of children are going through what they're going through, because we haven't had these conversations soon enough. Right. Um, so they don't know it's wrong until they get older. And then I'm like, wait, right. that happened to me. That wasn't normal. You know, right. exactly. So with all that being said, thank you for being the powerful woman thank that you are. Thank you for being courageous to share your story. Thank you. And thank you for being vulnerable and transparent, allowing us to see through the windows of your life so that we can manifest that power to break those generational curse and to break yeah. that silence, to break that silence. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, you're most welcome. So make sure to follow Tanisha Jordan on all social media platforms. Make sure to pick that book up from Amazon or just go to her website and pick it up. I would go to her website personally. That's just my thing that I would do because I want the, you know, the journal and I want it signed and all that good stuff. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, you want to go get it, just go get it. <laughs> okay. And also um, make sure to connect with her on her GoFundMe um, page as well. So that and I did not give the title. I'm sorry. Oh, just yeah. for those. Yeah, it's you would go under Lorraine High School, um, Stolen Innocence. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's powerful. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, just send me the link again. If, if you <laughs> haven't already sent it to me so I can put it, add it to all, add it to this video so that they can go and support because we have to help our babies, okay? They're our future. Yeah. We have to help yeah. our babies. So thank you again for everything that you're doing. And like always, we want you to stay motivated and we want you to know that the Tina Ramsey show and podcast, we got your back. So we'll come back with another amazing featured guest that's going to be helping you 
get through 22. See you later. Bye. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, follow, and subscribe on YouTube. And if you would like to join our podcast network, which is for everyday people doing extraordinary things, go to ctrmedianetwork.com to join our network today. And also listen to all the amazing podcasters that we currently have on our network. See you there. To be a featured guest on our show, go to thetinaramseyshow.com. Come share, shine, and grow on the Tina Ramsey Show and Podcast.